It's kind of hard to take him out because he belongs in both Yeah. Anyway, this bus uh, was still in service. Uh, many of the, old, the, the smaller systems can't afford to replace the whole fleet. Uh, like New York City can order 200 buses. They are happy if they can order one. Uh, so they have older buses that they keep painting up and uh, using. Now this is an interesting thing. The day our bus group came here, the company went out of business. Uh, but, uh, some of us were there earlier, and uh, you can see how early these buses were taken, uh, these pictures, movies. Uh, they had a whole fleet of old boat buses. Of course, we had lovely weather. We always have lovely weather. But that doesn't hurt from looking and enjoying the buses. Uh, this is downtown Holyoke, which is a fairly sizable city. It's just a little north of Springfield. And Springfield has the newer buses, and the company is now the Pioneer Valley bus company. Uh, the Holyoke Street Railway was taken over by the Springfield Bus Company, PBTA. So these scenes where you see PBTA buses, uh, these scenes are newer, uh, and they did replace all the old look buses. Some of them went into a semi-museum uh, in Southern Connecticut, uh, owned by a guy named Anthony Ortorino. He had about 10 of the old look buses from here. Some of those old look buses came from Springfield, and some of them came from public service of New Jersey. Some of, one of them was even running in the public service mainstream. But small town bus systems are very interesting. I mean, you can't compare them to the New York City Transit. Uh, nothing compares to New York City Transit. You can't compare 20 buses to 5,000, uh, but they're interesting anyway. Uh, well, remember, the oldest stuff is for the kids. If they rip them apart, well, uh, they're halfway there anyway. Uh, this was the, uh, when the private company was still on operation. There's a New Jersey Transit bus still in New Jersey or public service colors. That might have been bus that was saying, G572. Okay. It's really nice to see these buses. Uh, these are the type of buses I rode to school on. So you can see they are very ancient buses. Huh? Uh, late 40s or late 40s? Late 40s, all during the 50s. Yeah, now during the 50s. 58, 59, around there. The fishbowl, the first uh, RTS came out, no, the first fishbowl came out in 1959. So they made, they were still making old boat buses, the smaller version, until the mid 60s. And I think the Canadians made them even later. But the GM Canada built the same buses. Okay, is that the old car house? This is the Holyoke Street Railway car house. There was a sign that said that. Uh, the new company, I don't think, was using this garage. Uh, they uh, use the Springfield garage, which isn't that far away. What year is this film? Uh, I have to think about it. It looks like the early 70s. Well, you can tell by the automobiles anyway. Uh, I would say maybe the late 70s. Uh, maybe even later. Uh, Holyoke was one of the last cities, together with Mount Vernon and White Plains, to run this type of bus. And they even had some service from the Pioneer Valley Company already because uh, they knew they were going to take them over. The annoying thing was the day we got here was the last day that any buses rolled out of this garage, and when we got here, it was locked. Not nice. You can see where the public service emblem was on that stripe. Some of these uh, red ones had been painted green uh, in Springfield, which is only a few miles down the road. It's amazing to see a whole, this one that's still in green. Uh, it's amazing to see a whole fleet of these. Okay, again, I don't remember. Uh, that was, uh, this, this bus is in the Springfield paint job. 
you're going to be, I think, I think, seeing Springfield. 